Hello everyone and welcome to Study IQ. This video is for English viewers and uh, in this video I will bring to you the multiple choice questions, the best questions from 21st to 26th of October and uh, you know that the last 10 days or 11 days of a month there are a lot of questions and therefore the video, the last video of every month becomes very bulky and also it's not possible to uh, cover more than 300 questions in uh, one video. It gets boring, it gets monotonous. Then therefore I split the last 10 days into two halves. One is 21st to 26th and the next is 26th to 30th or 31st depending on the month. So this week is this week I will cover five days questions 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and 26 also. So six days questions I will cover. In this video uh, there are 85 questions uh, that I have uh, chosen and uh, all of the, these questions will be in English. This video is for English viewers. A video in Hindi was put up. It has been gaining good response. Almost uh, now 15,000 views in two days. So I expect the English uh, viewers also to share as much as they can. You can follow me on Facebook. Uh, almost 20,000 followers I have on Facebook now. And please note that on Facebook there are a lot of important, uh, uh, important data or uh, content that is shared. Like for example, I had deleted some videos. Now I have put up those videos but on different other channels. And I have shared the link on my Facebook. So if you follow me on Facebook, you won't miss any update. That's the link. That's the URL that you have to paste in your in your browser. www.facebook.com slash education. And we have launched the pen drive for CLAT. You can avail it now. Pre-booking has stopped now. Uh, today is 31st. Today is the last day if you want to avail the Diwali discount. And from tomorrow it won't be available. CDS, NDA, uh, it will take some time. Uh, but CTAT, KVSD, SSSB, we are launching on 5th of November and you can pre-book and get discount till 5th of November. CTAT, KVSD, SSSB, we have uh, focused especially on teaching development, teaching psychology, teaching methodology, child development, child psychology. These topics are extremely important for Kendri Vidyalaya and CTAT exam. And you need to call this number. I will give you another number. Since there is a huge demand, we have get, been getting a lot of phone calls. We have uh, enabled one more number. 958004-8004. That's the number that you can call and uh, gaurav.studyiq at gmail.com you can connect with me on this email also or Facebook depending on you. So let me begin. I myself have prepared uh, all of these que uh, questions and therefore I have a copyright for these questions. Let's begin. First question. Which airline has become the first ever flight to, uh, to fly over the Pacific Ocean? Uh, you know from Delhi to San Francisco instead of the Atlantic making the record of operating the world's longest non-stop flight so it's like this India is here okay then uh, here you have Africa Europe here you have North America and in North America you have San Francisco that is in United States of America which is the middle part of North America so all the airlines to, uh, used to take this route they'll fly from either Africa then Atlantic Ocean then here or like this from Europe then Atlantic Ocean and then uh, San Francisco but uh, one airline recently flew from India eastwards that is covering Japan Australia New Zealand and like that that is over the Pacific Ocean and not from the Atlantic Ocean and therefore this route is very very long that is why most airlines take this route but since uh, it covered this distance from Delhi to San Francisco uh, San Francisco is a place in United States of America very famous for the Golden Gate Bridge they can ask this in uh, Static GK. Where is Golden Gate Bridge? The answer is uh, San Francisco. You must have seen the movie Kal Ho Na Ho. In that, the title song, Shah Rukh Khan, he walks over a bridge. That is San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. Now, this particular record was made by Air India. So the answer is Air India. Vistara is an airline which is a joint venture between Tata and Singapore Airlines. That is called Vistara. And the rest are not important here. Janko Tabei. Janko Tebei, uh, very fine, uh, one of the most inspirational women of all time. She recently passed away. Now, the question that has been put up is, uh, she was related to which field? So, you know that Janko Tabei was the first woman to climb Mount Everest. Yes, Mount Everest height is 8848 meter. It is in uh, uh, in uh, Nepal. It is called Sagar Mat in uh, no local language of Nepal. It is uh, called Sagar Mat. Uh, in, it is also called uh, Choma Langma in Tibbat. Choma Langma, that is another name of uh, Mount Everest. So Janko Tebei was the first ever woman, you know, to climb Mount Everest. And she did it in 1975. So the answer is mountaineering. By the way, she was also the first woman, Janko Tebei. And let me tell you one more thing. She was from Japan. This also they can ask. Now, Janko Tebei was the first ever woman to climb the seven tallest peaks of the world. 
these are called seven summits you know like the highest peak of every continent like that so you have uh, in tanzania uh, the highest peak of africa like that mount kilimanjaro so the seven tallest peaks of the uh, continent she climbed in 1992 so the answer is mountaineering now the andhra pradesh government andhra pradesh government the chief minister is chandra babu naidu and the name of the party is telugu desam telugu desam so the andhra pradesh government has signed a financial technology cooperation agreement with the monetary authority of which country to promote innovation in financial services this is important for promoting research and monetary authority of which country that is the question it is the monetary authority of singapore also called mas in short mas so andhra pradesh government has done this for innovation projects in digital payments blockchain technology etc the national solidarity day is observed on which day in india solidarity solidarity is when you uh, you know when you show empathy uh, towards uh, someone especially the deceased it's used in that context so uh, there's a there's a story behind it uh, you know the story is that uh, you know uh, every year on october 20 we celebrate national solidarity day so the answer to this question is national uh, solidarity day is on october the 20th now why do we celebrate it because it was on this day that china attacked india in 1962 so india has had three major wars uh, okay so 1962 china war 65 pakistan war 71 pakistan war also called bangladesh liberation war because uh, we liberated bangladesh from the clutches of pakistan and then of course some uh, not so major like kargil in 99 uh, or um, very recent so uh, these are the three major wars which india has had so far so october 20 is the day when china attacked india in 1962 dv sadanand gowda dv sadanand gowda he is from udupi he is from udupi in karnataka he is the minister for statistics and program implementation you have to tell he has launched the international household survey network which is called ihsn toolkit and he has also launched the new website of this ministry that is the ministry of statistics recently he launched this international household survey network toolkit in which city now let me give you some heads up about this question so what is the use of this uh, toolkit so this ihsn it is basically a standard benchmark which can be used as an active management tool for better integration of administrative structure and statistical access for policy making basically this is a digitization network this is uh, to enhance the poly ma policy making framework so uh, it's a toolkit and it was launched in new delhi in fact uh, most of the answer to most of these questions is new De in fact new delhi world polio day polio is a very very important uh, and prevalent uh, uh, disease used to be now no more of course polio um, it uh, you know deframes the limbs uh, so the people have anomalous limbs they have uh, slanted legs etc and it is caused by a virus also called the polio virus so the polio day the world polio day it is observed globally every country almost every country celebrates it and it is celebrated by world health organization with its headquarter at geneva switzerland so world polio day is celebrated on which day world polio day is celebrated every year on october the 24th yes october 24th the same day on which united nations was uh, charter was ac uh, accepted so that is the answer and this is day celebrated basically to you know uh, spread awareness about the poliomyelitis c vidya sagar rao he is the governor of maharashtra c vidya sagar rao uh, uh, previously he also had uh, the additional charge of uh, Tamil Nadu uh, so the C. Desagar Rao the governor of Maharashtra he has inaugurated the 19th World Congress of International Association of Educators for World Peace also called IAEWP in short on October 24 this was the World Congress uh, of International Association of Educators so he, he did it in which Indian city that is the answer he did it in a city in uh, Maharashtra Nashik Nasik, famous for the origin of Godavari River. The Indo-Tibetan Border Police um, Raising Day is celebrated on which day? So this was uh, this is one of the most important, uh, you know, our uh, our paramilitary force. And uh, why was in Indo-Tibetan Border Police Force was raised? Uh, so it was raised uh, 
first let me tell you about something about it it was raised on 24th of october in 1962 you know that on 20th of october Ch china attacked india and we did not have enough manpower so what we did was we raised another force which was called itbp on uh, four days later after the commencement of the war on 24th october 1962 and the role of the indo tibetan border police force is basically uh, to do patrolling of the border so they uh, do it from ladakh to jachepla pass they do it from karakoram pass to jachepla pass uh, karakoram pass it is in ladakh area in the karakoram range and from there to jachepla in arunachal pradesh the total distance which indo tibetan border police force patrols is 3488 km so very very important and uh, you know their job is not easy because they have you know uh, outpost they have their uh, stations on altitudes ranging from 9000 feet to 18700 feet so very very harsh climate they operate in and uh, they their raising was on 24th of october so the answer is 24th of october and let me also tell you another question which they can ask that was the, it was their 55th uh, 55th uh, you know celebration day 55th raising day so to say what is the official mascot of fifa 2018 football world cup so uh, football world cup is monitored by fifa and anything related to europe the uh, the football in europe is by uefa that is the difference between uefa and fifa so uh, for example this year there was a tournament called euro which was won by portugal euro 2016 it was won by portugal that was uh, organized by uefa because uefa is responsible for football in europe but the world body is fifa so uh, fifa uh, uh, football world cup it's called fifa football world cup and mascot what is a mascot see mascot it is an animal you know it can be a mixture of animals also it represents the uh, the culture and the tradition you know of uh, one particular country usually the host that is called a mascot now 2018 world cup will be in russia okay very very cold country russia and russia also has some very famous clubs like zenit st petersburg um, you know cska moscow etc and very active in football so in russia the official mascot is zabi waka the wolf zabi waka the wolf is the official mascot of the 2018 fifa world cup now central government it has launched which scheme to empower the farmers especially women um, so in this scheme you know the farmers especially the women farmers will be trained and they will be given education so this is basically skill india skill development so which scheme is that uh, this scheme is called biotech kisan the name of this scheme has been kept biotech kisan it's an it's an important question and let me tell you some other things which all which they can ask so our uh, science and technology minister who is our science and technology cabinet minister dr harshavardhan uh, this scheme is under his ministry and he launched this scheme so that also you should know you should know all the cabinet ministers which state government will observe the next year that is year 2017 calendar year 2017 as garib kalyan varsh garib kalyan varsh means garib means poor kalyans mean welfare and varsh means year so poor welfare year welfare year for the for the poor uh, so which state government will observe the next year as garib kalyan varsh in which emphasis would be led on the welfare of poor people and generating the maximum employment opportunities for the youth this has decision has been taken by the government of haryana haryana and uh, Mm, the next year will also be the year of golden jubilee of uh, pandit din dayal upadhyay so it will be ded dedicated to him uh, golden jubilee of haryana and it it will be dedicated to um, dedicated to pandit din dayal upadhyay uh, one more thing uh, that haryana chief minister is manohar lal khattar of the bhartiya janata party that also you should know next question and uh, an important question too which of the following state government will sign a mou memorandum of understanding with unicef to procure 40000 doses of human papilloma virus vaccine human papilloma virus it is a very dangerous virus also called hpv in short it causes something known as cervical cancer in the adult women and uh, cervical cancer is very dangerous and it is a cause of morbidity and mortality among indian women by the way for cancer related death number one cause of cancer and deaths in india for women is breast cancer of all the cancer related deaths maximum deaths in india are caused by breast cancer and then you have cervical cancer cervical cancer is caused by human papilloma virus and therefore the state government of this you know the, the government of this state has procured 40000 doses from unicef unicef is united nations international children emergency fund with its headquarters in new york the same place where there is headquarter of united nations so 
यू नो दिस इज डन बाय पंजाब गवर्नमेंट पंजाब द स्टेट वेयर इलेक्शंस आर ड्यू वेरी सून एंड द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ पंजाब इज प्रकाश सिंह बादल विच ऑथर हैज वन द टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन मैन बुकर प्राइज फॉर हिज बुक द सेल आउट ब्रिलियंट क्वेश्चन एंड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बुकर प्राइज इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फ्रिक्वेंटली आस क्वेश्चन एवरी ईयर दिस इज पॉल बी and paul beatty is from united states of america and let me tell you he is the first person from united states of america to win this award it's a literary award super important question and you know from this question there can be three more questions like they can ask uh, you know uh, paul beatty won the booker prize this year for which book the answer is the sell out or they can ask the booker prize win, uh, winning paul beatty was from which country the answer is united states of america or they they can ask who won the booker prize the answer is paul beatty so when you read up my question from uh, you know from the video listen to it very carefully and also write down the important points because it is not one question it is four questions uh, you know rolled into one fourth joint edition of uh, for, fourth uh, military exercise joint edition mitra shakti 2016 india and which other country are doing it so these military um, exercises are very very important because uh, these uh, enhance the competency of a of the military of any country and uh, fourth edition of mitra shakti india did it with its neighbor sri lanka extremely important question and this uh, exercise took place in sri lanka to enhance our uh, interoperability and the indian contingent which went to this was rajputana rifles that also you can know uh, although they won't ask uh, this deep uh, now let me tell you some uh, one or two more things which they can ask there was a uh, there was a military exercise called prabal dostak prabal dostak which india did last month in september 2016 um you know prabal dostak was done uh, with kazakhstan okay now a question for you first question for today india does a military exercise called yuddh abhyas with which country yuddh abhyas it is a military exercise between india and which other country i think this year they had i think 12th yuddh abhyas very important question and this is my first question for today if you know the answer write it in comments name the indian actress who was honored recently at the second annual in style awards in los angeles so these are the uh, important awards which are uh, which are conducted by in style magazine okay in style magazine and uh, she, this indian actress has been making waves uh, all across she uh, her second uh, uh, season of uh, the serial quantico is due and also uh, she will act in a movie with uh, the rock dwayne johnson which is called baywatch so her name is priyanka chopra and uh, she uh, and one more person was given the award for style nicole kidman so nicole kidman and priyanka chopra were given the awards in the style category at the in style awards in los angeles recently important question you should know it prime minister narendra modi he launched uh, urja ganga scheme in which uh, city okay urja ganga see um, prime minister narendra modi he was uh, elected by the people of india as the member of parliament in lok sabha from varanasi so the answer to this question is also varanasi he launched seven schemes in varanasi at a cost of uh, around 5000 crore rupees 5000 crore rupees will be spent and what is this urja ganga scheme see urja ganga scheme it is basically a gas pipeline okay it is a gas pipeline for lpg gas liquefied petroleum gas which is called isobutane now this gas pipeline will be built from jagdishpur jagdishpur it is a place in uttar pradesh from jagdishpur to haldia haldia is a port in west bengal near kolkata from jagdishpur to haldia there will be a pipeline which will be built up it will be a 2050 km pipeline for lpg gas that is urja ganga scheme so this was launched in varanasi by prime minister narendra modi he defeated arvind kejriwal in varanasi election india will provide light emitting diode bulbs led bulbs and other energy efficient equipment also total cost is around 1.34 crore rupees although the amount is not very much uh, but see india is uh, india has a scheme called ujala unnat jyoti uh, you know the full form now led bulbs are being uh, used and the normal bulbs the traditional conventional orthodox bulbs are being replaced by led bulbs to save energy and this scheme has been adopted in a lot of indian uh, states and india will provide led bulbs to which country now it uh, as a grant as a grant so this is uh, as a grant and this will be provided to a very very small country you might uh, not have heard the name also and this was following the visit of our uh, power minister piyush goel he visited this country on a two day visit and uh, he signed this deal with the prime minister of vanuatu charlot salvai so the answer is vanuatu it's a small island country very very small 
वट इज इंडिया रैंक इन द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम्स ग्लोबल जेंडर गैप रिपोर्ट सो जेंडर गैप इन इंडिया इज वेरी मच स्टिल द इट इज अ पेट्रियारिकल सोसाइटी द गैप बिटवीन द मेल एंड द फीमेल इज स्टिल वेरी मच एंड इट कैन बी सीन इन द जॉब्स इन आवर डे टू डे लाइव ऑल्सो वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फॉरम हेडक्वाटर इज ऑल्सो इन स्विटरलैंड एंड वट इज इंडिया इज रैंक इंडिया इज रैंक इज अ वेरी वेरी पुअर एटी सेवन बट वी हैव मेड सम प्रोग्रेस बिकॉज लास्ट ईयर आवर रैंक वॉज वन हंड्रेड एंड एट सो वी हैव इम्प्रूव ट्वेंटी वन प्लेसेस इन जस्ट वन ईयर सो वी आर इम्प्रूविंग नो डाउट नाउ वी आर एटी सेवन बट स्टिल अ लॉन्ग वे टू गो एंड विच कंट्री इज नंबर वन नंबर वन इज आइसलैंड इन आइसलैंड द जेंडर गैप इज लोएस्ट दैट इज द इट हैज द मोस्ट इगेलीटेरियन द मोस्ट यू नो इक्वल सोसाइटी बिटवीन द देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन मेल एंड फीमेल इन आइसलैंड सेकेंड वॉज नॉर्वे नो सेकेंड वॉज फिनलैंड थर्ड वॉज नॉर्वे फोर्थ वॉज स्वीडन सो दी स्मॉल स्मॉल कंट्रीज एंड आइसलैंड इज द आंसर सो यू जस्ट हैव टू रिमेंबर हु इज नंबर वन एंड वट इज द रैंक ऑफ इंडिया दैट्स इट विच कंट्री इज प्राइम मिनिस्टर जॉन की he visited he visited india on a 3 day long state visit on october the 26th 3 day visit he uh, is a prime minister of new zealand new zealand the capital of new zealand is wellington and it's a it's an island in uh, the pacific and uh, john key he arrived in india he signed mous also he met our president pranab mukherjee also this was basically uh, f- for business for cooperation in business Which country won the 2016 Robo Cup challenge? See, Robo means robots. So robots of one country were pit against the other, and uh, in the final there were two countries. One was Australia, one was United States of America. So the robot of United States of America turned out to be the best. It defeated the robot of Australia. So the answer is USA won, and USA beat Australia in the final. By the way, you should know one more thing also. World Robot Conference. Where was it held for 2016? World Robot Conference. It took place in China. Carlos Alberto he recently passed away he was related to which field so look this is an extremely important question let me tell you why carlos alberto was the captain of the brazil football team that won the world cup in 1970 yes that is why he was very important and carlos alberto was the captain of the brazil world cup team last time brazil won the world cup was in the year 2002 in which cafu was the captain cafu so carlos alberto he passed away he was from sports he was from football he was from brazil remember all the things commerce ministry commerce ministry has an arm which is called directorate general of anti dumping and allied duty which is called dgad in short now commerce ministry's arm dgad it has recommended an anti dumping duty of 5 to 20% on which product to protect its domestic industry now uh, second question for you who is our commerce minister who is the commerce minister cabinet minister for commerce very very important question she was previously she it one hint i gave gave you it is she not he and uh, she was also the national spokesperson of the bharatiya janata party uh, for for english uh, you know uh, when upa was in power so commerce ministry arm um, dgad has recommended up to put a anti dumping duty of 5 to 20% on which product so this they have recommended to put on jute see in india the largest producer of jute in india is west bengal and india ranks second in the world in terms of jute production the maximum jute happens in bangladesh the maximum jute production happens happens in bangladesh and bangladesh also produces a much better quality of jute compared to india who is the chief financial officer of online shopping company flipkart who resigned on october the 26th he resigned he his name is sanjay baveja Sanjay Baveja he was with Flipkart for 2 years but he put down his papers on 26th of October he was the chief financial officer of Flipkart Flipkart was founded by two people Sachin Bansal and Binny Bansal what is india's rank in world banks ease of doing business world bank's headquarters is in washington dc it is one of the bretton woods twins world bank and imf they are called bretton woods twins so world bank uh, headquarters is in washington and the world bank's president is jim yong kim he is reelected previously also he was there now also he is there jim yong kim ease of doing business india's rank is 130 and the government uh, among 190 countries total 190 country india is 130 in india if you want to start a business it takes 29 days according to the world bank report number one on this index is new zealand so these are some things which you should know and second is singapore in new zealand if you want to start a business you you need one day in singapore you need just 3 days and the government of india has said that their target is to come in the top 50 who is 
who was appointed as the chief executive officer of international hockey federation fih uh, international hockey federation who has been appointed as the chief executive officer his name is jason mccracken just mug this up yeah, just mug this name up jason mccracken when is the united nations day celebrated across the globe the day that marks the anniversary of the entry into force of the un charter in 1945 yes that's right so it is on 24th of october and 24th of october is the day when the united nations charter was adopted universally in 1945 and united nations the biggest success is that it has been able to prevent world war 3 so world war 3 has not taken place because of united nations which ship which ship was commissioned into the indian navy on may 12 1987 and it was given a grand send off from the port in kochi after five decades of its service to the navy so this is a very was a very emotional moment and uh, this ship served indian navy for almost 50 years and uh, you know almost 55 years although it was commissioned in the navy in 1987 but for almost 55 years it served the indian navy and it served 27 years with the royal navy so uh, this is the ins virat super important question super important where is the sardar patel hospital and heart institute it was recently inaugurated by president pranam mukherjee not only president pranam mukherjee inaugurated sardar patel hospital and heart institute but it also but he also inaugurated uh, you know uh, a hospital in bharuch called the seva ashram seva ashram hospital and uh, see wherever you see sardar patel airport sardar patel uh, dam etc all of these will be in gujarat because sardar patel was gujarati and uh, you know it's a coincidence that today we are celebrating sardar patel's anniversary today on 31st so that's also a coincidence and my recording i'm recording the video also on today today the 31st of october so sardar patel the the iron man of india and uh, this hospital was also in gujarat now i have deliberately made all the four options in gujarat so that it does not become easy for you so this hospital was inaugurated in ankaleshwar gujarat so that is the answer which eminent bollywood personality has been selected for the prestigious yash bharti samman see yash bharti samman it is the highest honor by the uttar pradesh government it is the highest uh, honor which is given uh, you know and this year it is the highest state award it uh, is given to nasiruddin shah nasiruddin shah and he will be given rupees 11 lakh also and an honor also citation also so film personality nasuddin shah was given yash bharti samman by the uttar pradesh government they can also ask that yash bharti samman is given by which state government the answer is up government under the leadership of akhilesh yadav who is the chief minister india has been ranked at which place among the 51 developing countries developing countries or the third world countries the so called developing countries in female literacy uh, this was uh, done by new york based international commission on financing global education opportunity which is headquartered at in new york india's rank is a very very poor 38 among the all the developing countries in female literacy name the doctors who have been selected for the prestigious dr bidhan chandra roy award see dr bidhan chandra roy award is given to eminent doctors this award was started in the year 1976 and this time three doctors were given this award dr randeep guleria he is from aims and then there were two doctors from sgrh Uh, board of management at sgrh one is the chairman uh, ds rana and there is arvind kumar so the answer is all of the above all these three were given the dr bidhan chandra roy award sgrh is sargangaram hospital prime minister narendra modi he launched which campaign to invite people to send letters and messages to the indian armed forces on the occasion of diwali and this was done in the aftermath of the uri attack and the aftermath of the surgical strikes that were carried out on pakistan pradhan mantri narendra modi launched which campaign so this was basically that the ordinary public the they can send the the common public they can send their messages love messages for uh, you know to the armed forces it was called sandesh to soldiers sandesh to soldiers hashtag was sandesh to soldiers what is the name of the 800 year old village that was electrified for the first time on october 23 so we have places like these also in india this is a 800 year old village and it saw electricity for the first time in 800 years it was lit up by 156 led lights it is a very very small village in ladakh it is called ichu village ichu village it is in ladakh in jammu and kashmir and it was uh, pow powered by 156 led lights so, Which Indian chess player won the 
who given international chess tournament he was uh, previously the world junior chess champion also uh, he is a grandmaster in fact in this tournament top 3 positions were uh, you know were by the indian grandmasters so the winner was abhijit gupta abhijit gupta second place was by grandmaster sandeepan chanda and the third place was by grandmaster lalit babu all three were indian who given chess tournament it took place in netherlands or holland when is the world osteoporosis day is observed what is osteoporosis osteo means bone porosis means hollowing of the bone osteoporosis mean when your bones become very very weak and they break they they fracture holes are made in them that is called world osteoporosis day now osteoporosis can take place in women also in uh, in whom uh, you know the periods stop during menopause very very common it can also be due to hormonal disorders it can be due to less calcium because calcium is required by the bones calcium and phosphorus so world osteoporosis day to spread awareness about it it is uh, celebrated every year on 20th of october important question and the theme this year was love your bones protect your future love your bones protect your future which formula 1 driver won the 2016 united states formula 1 grand prix yes important question so nico rosberg has a lead but this race was won by lewis hamilton and this was important because it was his 50th grand prix win lewis hamilton of britain who drives mercedes car he defeated his compatriot not his compatriot his uh, i mean the teammate teammate because nico rosberg also drives mercedes and he is from germany so that is these things you should know and uh, daniel ricciardo he is also a very good driver he drives the car red bull and massa he recently retired which company this company is the world's largest on you know operator of the oil refining complex but very recently it has started selling lpg cylinder so recently it launched a 4 kg lpg cylinder on pilot basis which uh, which company is this this is the reliance industries reliance industries it started the lpg cylinder 4 kg which it was launched in four districts on pilot basis recently you know indian oil bharat petroleum hp control hp they control the lpg market there are three companies which are there in the lpg market all your cooking gas cylinder they are provided by either bharat petroleum or hp hindustan petroleum or indian oil but now even reliance has forayed into this and reliance is spending one you know reliance will is planning to set up to 1.2 lakh tons of liquefied petroleum gas which company uh, recently set up a cyber security engagement center and the the basically this is to enhance the computer related uh, security that is prevent hacking etc and uh, that is called cyber security so cyber security engagement center was recently established by which company it was set up in new delhi by microsoft so you should remember it it was set up in new delhi also and uh, you know it it is seventh center of microsoft the other six are not in india they are in singapore tokyo seoul beijing berlin and washington dc world bank one half of the bretton woods twins with its headquarters in washington world bank will give give how much loan to india for construction of a road this road is called eastern dedicated uh, freight corridor it's it is for construction of the freight corridor which will be from ludhiana to kolkata and by the way it is not a small road from ludhiana to kolkata ludhiana is in punjab kolkata is in west bengal the total distance is 1840 kilometers to build this road world bank is giving us a loan of a very handsome loan of 650 million dollars 650 million dollars what will be sold by the government of india from its buffer stock through the national commodity and derivatives exchange that is called ncdex so that the prices can be reduced see the thing is what is buffer stock so you know whenever there is a shortage in the market of any grain its prices decrease its prices increase because of shortage that is supply demand simple supply demand supply decreases price increases as simple as that or demand increases price increases as simple as that now government it uh, keeps a buffer stock buffer stock means it stock something so that if there is a shortage in the market prices don't increase they can always uh, you know transfer some of the stock to the market increase the supply therefore the prices can be controlled so th this time uh, they decided to push some of the buffer stock into the market to decrease the price of chana chana is called chickpea in english chickpea the cyber security research and development fund will be set up by the government of india i repeat cyber security research and development fund r and d fund and basically this is to enhance our cyber capacity our cyber capacity should be like russia should be like israel who are one of the you know the topmost countries when it comes to cyber security in the world 
and for that we are keeping 1000 crore rupees now to uh, to counter cyber threat the question is who will head this cyber security research and development fund so it will be set up by it will be headed by a committee but who will be the president of that committee the president since it is related to security the president of that committee will be national security advisor ajit doval ajit doval who was the chairman of tata who was removed recently so he has 18% stake in tata sons but uh, he is uh, he was their second non tata chairman cyrus mistri he was removed and well the legacy issues continue so the answer is cyrus mistri and uh, the ex chairman ratan tata he has taken over he has taken over and within 3 months i think 3 months is the period which they have given in which they will select the uh, you know the next uh, chairman so i think it is 3 months or 6 months something like that in fact ratan tata has written to prime minister modi also about uh, the replacement which of the following countries has been chosen as the chairman of the association of natural rubber producing countries so there is this organization called association of natural rubber producing countries which is called anrpc now which of the countries has been chosen as the chairman so it was a unanimous decision and the answer is anrpc's uh, chairman is india yes the answer is india which city became the fifth indian city to be ratified as a venue for next year's under 17 football world cup so so far four indian cities have been confirmed you know that under 17 football world cup is taking place in india i am talking about men's world cup football men football uh, women's under 17 football world cup was recently won by north korea but i am talking about men's which has not yet taken place it will be in india in 2017 so far there are four locations which have been confirmed or ratified by the by the bodies now by the fifa now which are those four locations they are kochi kochi was the first location which was ratified okay so in the exam they can also ask you which was the first location to be confirmed as the venue for the under 17 football world cup the answer is kochi then there were navi mumbai goa new delhi and the fifth is guwahati yes so the answer is guwahati it became the fifth location to be ratified for next year's football world cup next question not just a question this is a motivation daily inspiration and today is monday so you can call it monday inspiration now name the driver who won the mr asia title see he was a ordinary driver he used to drive these uh, you know water tankers in bengaluru and in bodybuilding he has won the mr asia title which which was held in philippines um, and he won it so what is his name his name is g balakrishna he is 25 years old he was a water tanker driver and he won the mr asia title g balakrishna which country recently won the 2016 fifa under 17 women's world cup so now i'm talking about under 17 women's world cup it was won by north korea believe it or not yes north korea the capital of north korea is pyongyang pyongyang very crazy country very separated isolated country from the world the only country with which north korea has any sort of relations is china and uh, north korea is controlled by a dictator called kim jong un uh, his father was even worse kim jong il and his father was the one of the pioneers of north korea who made north korea what it is and protected it from south korea his name was kim jong sung and north korea and south korea they have a very they have lot of enmity in fact the border between north korea and south korea which is called demilitarized zone or dmz it is said to be the dangerous place on most dangerous place on earth south korea is a is a lovely country the capital is seoul but north korea well you should read about north korea which of the following sports have been included in the tokyo olympics see tokyo olympics will be in 2020 you know that Tokyo Japan is uh, organizing the Olympics uh, after Rio 2016 Tokyo 2020 the uh, the you know the the head of state of Japan the prime minister of Japan Shinzo Abe he uh, baton was passed to him in the closing ceremony of the Rio Olympics now in Tokyo Olympics five new sports will be added which are those five sports karate surfing skateboarding all of the above the answer is all of the above five sports will be added but let me tell you the other two also so that uh, you get a holistic coverage so these sports are number 1 karate yes then there is a surfing there is a skateboarding then there is something known as climbing and then there is something known as baseball softball baseball softball so if anybody of you wishes to participate you can start practicing climbing there is a good chance because this is the first time a sport is being introduced which former chief justice of odisha high court has been appointed as the chairman of the jammu and kashmir human rights commission see jammu and kashmir governor is mr n n vohra this they can also ask now please note that uh, 
the chief minister of jammu and kashmir is elected for 6 years you know the chief minister of all the states in india is elected for 5 years but in jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir legislative assembly is elected for 6 years and the governor of jammu and kashmir is mr n n vohra and who is the chief minister of jammu and kashmir mehbooba mufti of the pdp now it is a governor's prerogative governor's right to appoint the chairman of the human rights commission for jammu and kashmir human rights commission this fellow has elected appointed former chief justice of odisha high court his name is bilal nazki bilal nazki which dam in karnataka was chosen by the world bank for the world bank's award of excellence for the best utilization of funds for renovation it is a dam in karnataka and uh, you know it got the funds from world bank and those funds were very properly uti utilized by the government of karnataka now the government of karnataka is a congress government the chief minister name is siddaramaiah siddaramaiah who lost his son last month now you have to tell me which dam is karnataka also funded by the world bank by the way the name is almati dam george battle passed away recently he was a politician he was a president of which country name is george battle he was also a very good liar, lawyer so he was from colorado party and he was the president of uruguay from 2000 to 2005 uruguay is a country in south america now second question for you today what is the capital of uruguay what is the capital of uruguay write down in comments if you know the answer meher mittal passed away recently he was associated with which field so if you are from punjab and if you have seen any punjabi movie meher mittal was a very very celebrated comedian meher mittal legendary punjabi actor so the answer is cinema which football player won the 2016 european golden boy award so there are a lot of uh, great football players which are coming up the prodigies so this player he was instrumental for portugal winning the euro 2016 euro uh, portugal was a weak team but still it won the euro 2016 and one of the best performance was given by renato sanchez and therefore he is the new golden boy he was given 2016 european golden boy award marcus rashford is also a great player he plays from uh, you know he plays for manchester united and he is a very good player to look forward to uh then there was uh, one guy called uh, you know kingsley coman he is also a very good player he is from bayern munich and then you have ac milan goalkeeper gian luigi dona ruma he is being called the next buffon so these are the players he beat in this award renato sanchez from portugal and bayern munich he is also from bayern munich he won the european golden boy award nitin gadkari he is our road and transport minister he announced that the center is investing 1 lakh crore rupees to boost the roadways and the inland water transport in which state now you know that in this state there is a river brahmaputra on which you have the national waterway 2 from sadia to dhubri if you remember see in india we also have very good waterways not just the roadways so for example you have the national waterway 1 which is on ganga nadi from alabad to haldia and then you have national waterway 2 from sadia to dhubri in assam on brahmaputra river so there is a lot of potential in assam for waterways and uh, road transport also so rupees 1 lakh crore is the amount which will be which will be invested to boost the road and inland water transport in assam and assam has a new government it has the first time ever bjp government in the form of sarbanand sonowal who is the uh, who, who is the chief minister of assam now if you followed uh, assam elections then you would know that uh, hemant biswas hemant uh, mr hemant he fled congress and he joined bjp and that was the game changer Union Minister for Civil Aviation, Mr. Ashok Gajapati Raju, he is our Cabinet Minister for Civil Aviation. He launched which regional air connectivity scheme in New Delhi? Very important scheme. In fact, if you want, I can make a separate video on this scheme. It is called Udan, and let me tell you, Udan has a full form also. Yes, Udan has a full form also. Can you tell me what is the full form of Udan? Now that is your next question for today. Tell me the full form of Udan. and what is the what is the aim what is the aim for uh, this udan scheme why they have launched this udan scheme that in itself is a question so basically this is to reach out to the common man right now around 8 crore tickets are sold 8 crore tickets are sold in india every year airline tickets government wants to increase by 2022 to 30 crore tickets so to uh, reach out to poor people government wants that poor people should also spend on the airlines and uh, that is why they have launched this scheme udan and uh, that is the answer it was launched by uh, 
सिविल एविएशन मिनिस्टर अशोक गजपति राजू सो सर्टेन रिस्ट्रिक्शन आर पुट अब लाइक वन ईयर वन आवर एयरलाइन कैन नॉट चार्ज मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज एंड लाइक दैट सो डू डू रीड उड़ान स्कीम इन डिटेल विच रेजिमेंट ऑफ द इंडियन आर्मी वन अ गोल्ड मेडल इन कैम्ब्रियन पेट्रोल एक्सरसाइज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द ब्रिटिश आर्मी येस सो इट वॉज द इट वॉज अ रेजिमेंट देर लॉर्ड ऑफ रेजिमेंट्स लाइक राजपूताना राइफल सिख रेजिमेंट बट दिस अवॉर्ड वॉज वन बाय गोरखा राइवल गोरखा राइफल्स देयर रेजिमेंट हैड एट गोरखा जवान्स विच वन द गोल्ड मेडल बाय द ब्रिटिश आर्मी a protein and rich uh, which crop variety has been developed by the indira gandhi krishi vishwavidyalaya see in india protein malnutrition is very common people do not get enough protein forget people children do not get enough protein and therefore there are two diseases which are very common these are called protein energy malnutrition pem in short one is called quasi orker and the other is called marasmus okay now quasi orker also there will be protein deficiency marasmus also there will be protein deficiency the only difference between quasi orker and marasmus is that marasmus you will have muscle wasting also which is not seen in quasi orker these are the important differences and uh, to prevent this 10% protein has been added to this crop which crop is this it is rice so they have added they have fortified rice with protein so that protein deficiency diseases can be prevented this has been done by the scientist of the indira gandhi krishi vishwavidyalaya try try is the telecom regulatory authority of india see in india we have a oligopolistic market this is called oligopoly what is oligopoly oligopoly means when there are few sellers so in indian telecom market only some 10 15 companies are there major 10 15 companies like you have tata indicom you have idea you have uh, reliance jio you have airtel you have uh, you know vodafone and all these but the number of these companies providing such services is very less that is why there is a oligopoly market now in oligopoly market there is always a danger of a cartel formation cartel what is a cartel cartel is when all of these companies they you know they collude with each other that is called a cartel so what is the job of try tries to keep a check on this and recently three companies airtel vodafone and idea they denied providing interconnectivity to this company to ward off the competition and therefore try has put try has recommended to put a penalty of 3500 3050 crore rupees on the, these uh, three companies because they were denying interconnectivity service to reliance jio so they are already so scared of reliance jio that they were denying interconnectivity reliance jio as you know is a uh, venture by mukesh ambani what will be established by our agriculture ministry in each of the districts in the country so our agriculture minister is mr radha mohan singh okay mr radha mohan singh is our agriculture minister he is from bihar and a very able minister now he has said that in every district of india there will be one what will it be krishi vigyan kendra soil health card farmer society helpline booth or more crop per drop so it will be krishi vigyan kendra krishi vigyan kendra will be built up in every district of india the environment pollution control authority it is basically a organization which is made on the rec recommendation of the supreme court it is a supreme court appointed pollution watchdog it checks uh, like uh, the level of pollution etc it has launched epca it has launched a mobile application to curb pollution to reduce pollution what is the name of the app and you know that winters are coming now winter winter is coming i am not talking about that serial winter is coming i am talking about actually winters are coming in winters we have a pollution problem so because uh, you know the air gets cooled it becomes heavy so there is no dispersion of air there is no dispensation of air from the lower layers to the higher layer so the polluted air becomes trapped and that is why winters have more problem of pollution so it has launched a app which will help in reducing pollution the name of the app is hawa badlo hawa badlo which means uh, change the air the sports journalist association of mumbai which is called as jam it is the sports journalist association of mumbai it will present which player with the lifetime achievement award so the job of this one of the jobs of this uh, association is to honor the maharashtra sportsman so all of all these four are the maharashtra sportsmen nandu natekar in fact was the last person who got this award in 2013 the lifetime achievement award he was a very famous renowned badminton player but this time in 2016 who has won the award this time sunil gavaskar has won this award sunil's sunil manohar gavaskar just manohar is his middle name just like sachin tendulkar's middle name is ramesh sachin ramesh tendulkar so sunil manohar gavaskar won the award which is the sport journalist association mumbai's lifetime achievement award which company will acquire butler america aerospace for 85 uh, you know 85 million dollars 
for strengthening its position in the aerospace and defense engineering services. So Butler America Aerospace, it is a company for defense engineering and uh, it will it will be acquired by a big company from India headquartered at Noida, one of the fastest growing IT companies of India uh, founded by Shiv Nadar. The name is HCL. Nabad, our agriculture bank for rural development set up in 1982. So Nabad has uh, given, has sanctioned allocated a loan of 19,702 rupees that is crore rupees for National Water Development Agency for how many irrigation projects under the long term irrigation fund that is LTIF. So this huge loan of you know around uh, you can say it is around 3 billion dollars. This loan will be given by NABARD to National Water Development Agency for making how many irrigation projects. How many irrigation projects will be built up with the help of this loan? These will be 50. 50 irrigation projects. This was announced by the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley in the budget and I am glad that he was true to his word. Now how much amount can Reserve Bank of India, the Central Bank of India is Reserve Bank of India, Governor is Urjit Patel. So Reserve Bank of India will put a penalty on the payments banks and the payment system if they, if they try to operate without permission. Okay. So how much amount can the Reserve Bank of India penalize? If any payment bank is found to operate without permission, it is 5 lakh to 1 crore rupee. That is the slab. 5 lakh to 1 crore and the first government payments bank will be the India Post Payment Bank. India Post Payment Bank which will have 100% stake by the government. Which bank has raised 500 crore rupee via the rupee denominated bonds called as Masala Bond. Now what is a bond? See bond is when it is a debt instrument. Okay, When a company uh, it uh, takes money from uh, investors and and uh, promises them a return, a fixed return every year or six monthly, that is called a bond. That is the difference between a stock and a bond. Stock, equity and share, they mean the same thing. Bond is different. See, stock, equity or share is when the company dilutes its own stake, sells it to shareholder. That is called a share or a stock or a equity. In that, there is a lot of risk. If the company does well, then you will get money. But if the company loses money, you will lose money. But in bond, the risk is much less because the company, uh, you know, is legally binding on the investor to uh, you know pay a certain fixed sum every year or six monthly depending on the company to company so what is masala bond now let's say if a foreign investor is investing in india he will be given the bond in rupee so these are rupee denominated bond for overseas investors only those are called masala bond now london you know is the hub of masala bonds london is the main place from where most of the masala bonds they are uh, they are operated and which bank has raised 500 crore it is the hdfc bank under the able leadership of aditya puri who is the founder and chairman hdfc bank is the answer india's which city has been named among the top 15 cities globally in terms of the total wealth held according to the new world wealth so new world wealth has given a report in which one indian city only is in the top 15 cities which have the maximum wealth so you know the financial capital of india is mumbai from here there is the maximum wealth mumbai is responsible for one third of india's gdp and uh, top 15 cities it is ranked 14. can you guess which is the number one L number one is london so number one is london london is the wealthiest city in the world with a wealth of 2.7 trillion dollar second was new york and the third was tokyo these are top three London number one, New York number two, Tokyo number three, Mumbai 14th. Fifth, Tawang festival was recently celebrated in which state? See, Tawang is a place, it is a, one of the easternmost uh, villages in the in India, in Arunachal Pradesh. Tawang festival is celebrated between two states. One is Assam, one in Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, this time it was celebrated in Tawang, in Arunachal Pradesh. It was fifth festival. In fact, let me tell you, it was uh, attended by, uh, you know, uh, US ambassador to India, Richard Verma. And uh, he attended, it was a strategic decision because uh, China often calls Tawang its own. So when the Indian, when the US ambassador to India, Richard Verma, he attends it. It is a sign that he is acknowledging India's sovereignty over Arunachal Pradesh. Tilak Hazarika, very famous what? He recently passed away. Tilak Hazarika, he was from Assam, as the name Hazarika suggests to you. So Tilak Hazarika, he was 95 years old. He passed away recently and he was a very famous journalist. He was also the editor of a lot of famous, uh, you know, newspapers. He also wrote a lot of uh, books in Assamese. So the answer is journalism. Who won the European Golden Shoe Award for being the leading goal scorer in Europe's top domestic leagues 2015-2016? See, golden boot, golden shoe or golden boot is given to the top scorer in the top leagues. 
which are the top uh, domestic leagues. In England, we have the English Premier League, also called Barclays Premier League, because it is sponsored by the Barclays Bank. Then you have in, uh, you know, Germany, you have the Bundesliga. In you in in uh, Italy, you have something known as Serie A. And in Spain, you have La Liga. These are some of the good and big leagues. Now, this particular player, he scored the maximum goals. So, every year it is either Messi or Ronaldo. But this year, it was Luis Suarez. He scored the maximum number of goals. He is from a country called Uruguay in South America. And he plays for a club which is called Barcelona, which is a very good football club from the Catalonia region of Spain. The first ever three-day global conference to strengthen the arbitration and enforcement is being held in which Indian city? I repeat the question. The first ever three-day global conference to strengthen the arbitration and enforcement is being held in which Indian city? And uh, there is a particular reason why this global conference uh, to strengthen arbitration and enforcement was uh, held. And uh, this was uh, in New Delhi. The answer to the most questions will be New Delhi. In fact, this conference was uh, inaugurated by uh, our President Pranam Mukherjee and it, it was also attended to by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Who has recently been honoured with the Milan Honorary Citizenship Award? Milan is a place in, uh, uh, in Italy, famous for the fashion, Milan fashion. Similarly, Paris is famous for fashion, Milan is famous for fashion. These are also called fashion cities of the world. So, Milan Honorary Citizenship was bestowed upon Dalai Lama. Please note, Dalai Lama is not a name of a person, it is a name of a religious post. So, after the present Dalai Lama, he makes way for the next, then he will be, the next one will be called the Dalai Lama. So, Dalai Lama, the religious head of Tibet, he takes, has taken refuge in India and he stays in McLeod Ganj in Himachal Pradesh. Who has been elected as the new president of the International Gymnastics Federation? This particular person, he is also the, you know, the chairman of the Japan Gymnastic Association, secretary general of the Japan uh, Gymnastic Association. And now he will be, he has been uh, elevated to the position, elected as the new president of the International Gymnastic Federation. And he will become the ninth president. And uh, before this, Mr. Bruno uh, Grandi was there. So now it is Mr. Morinari Watanbe. He is from Japan. So the answer is Japan. Where is the headquarter of International Gymnastic Federation? Well, it is in Lausanne, Switzerland. Next question. The State Bank of India has declared which city as its fifth zone in the northeast of India? So State Bank of India, as you know, it is the largest bank in India. Not just the largest public sector bank. It is the overall largest bank in India. The largest lender of money in India. State Bank of India is getting merged in five of its associate bank and Bharatiya Mahila Bank. So total six banks are getting merged in the State Bank of India. And to see through the merger, the chairman Arundhati Bhattacharya, her tenure has been increased. She was due to retire, but her tenure, because she is a very able uh, chairperson, so Ministry of Finance has taken the decision that her tenure be extended. Now, the State Bank of India has declared which uh, city as the fifth zone. It is Selchar. State Bank of India has four zones in Northeast India. Can you name those four? It is Guwahati, Shillong, Dibrugad and Jorhat. These are the four places. Uh, Dibrugad is in Assam. Guwahati is also in Assam. Shillong is the capital of uh, Meghalaya and Jorhat is also in Assam. So these four plus Selchar. These are five zones of SBI in Northeast. The police commemoration day is observed on which date in India? So there is a little story behind it. You know, in the year 1959, the Chinese soldiers, they, uh, you know, they uh, did an, uh, they came to India in Ladakh. Basically, they crossed the line and they came to India and they killed, you know, a group of Indian policemen. They, they were uh, led by Mr. Karam Singh, who was the leader of that police battalion. All of the policemen were killed by the Chinese troops on this day in 1959. So this was in, this was on 21st of October. And on this day, we remember those brave policemen who, who gave uh, up their lives for India. So this Remembrance Day was uh, officially instituted in 1960, but throughout the country, at national level, it was started in 2012. The answer is 21st October, Police Commemoration Day. Which country announced its exit from the International Criminal Court? This country said that International Criminal Court is very biased against the African countries. So South Africa, it exited from the International Criminal Court. It also notified United Nations of the same. South Africa has three capitals. Not one, not two, but three capital. Remember that. And uh, South Africa, it is a part of BRICS and therefore it is very important for us because see BRICS, South Africa is also has a, you know, lot of uh, res resources like gold, etc. And South Africa's uh, head of state is Jacob Zuma. When is the World Statistics Day observed? And this time one person was also awarded for his exceptional contribution to the field of statistics. His name is Sir David Cox. 
Sir David Cox. He is from Britain. He is a British statistician who was given this award, and uh, he was given international prize for statistics. Uh, Sir David Cox. Remember that World Statistics Day is observed on October twenty every year. Statistics, as you know, is becoming more and more important because of analytics. This time, the theme was better data, better lives. Better data, better lives. Name the ship, the first petrol vessel. Petrol means when you keep a check on something, keep a vigil on something, vigilante. So the name the first petrol vessel that is commissioned by the Indian Coast Guard for surveillance, for checking smuggling, for checking the transgression, coastal patrolling, etc. Its name is ICGS. That is Indian Coast Guard ship. The name is Rani Gedin Liu. And who is Rani Gedin Liu? Rani means queen. Who is Queen Gedin Liu? See, Queen Gedin Liu. She was, uh, you know, she was a political leader naga spiritual and political leader and she hailed from manipur so the answer is icgs rani gadin liu indian railways has declared how many railway stations has green train corridor see if you uh, wanted to relieve yourself in a train the all the feces and exc excreta it will fall on the train tracks not anymore because these trains now are fitted with the bio toilets and they have been declared green train corridor so there are two routes which have been declared one is the route from okha to kanalus route which, which is 141 km and the second is the 31 km long porbandar to uh, once jaslia porbandar is a place where mahatma gandhi was born uh, and porbandar is in gujarat so these are the two routes so the answer is two who won the prestigious wildlife photographer award it was given by british broadcasting channel which is bbc and natural history museum in london so who won the prestigious wildlife photographer award he is a person who hails from maharashtra from mumbai his name is nayan khanolkar nayan khanolkar it was 52nd such award which was given to nayan khanolkar who has launched aspire the full form of aspire is a scheme for promotion of res innovation and rural entrepreneurship and agro industry so you need not know the full form it is very very long but i'll repeat it a scheme for promotion of innovation and rural entrepreneurship and agro industry that is the full form of aspire it is basically a fund it is a 60 crore rupees fund but this fund has been set up by which organization or which bank or which committee it has been set up by sidbi sidbi is small industrial development bank of india and sidbi also operates mudra bank sidbi operates mudra bank who was appointed as the commandant of the indian naval academy at azimala in kerala so at azimala in kerala our vice admiral his name is uh, s v bokhare he is now the uh, commandant of the indian naval academy so the answer is s v bokhare satyadev katare he recently passed away he was related to which field satyadev katare he was uh, you know mla he was the constituent he was Uh, assembly uh, his assembly constituency was bhind district in madhya pradesh he was a mla he was a politician basically so the answer is politics who is the author of the book the sleep walkers dream super important question the sleep walkers dream because this book has been uh, recommended for hindu prize also it has been authored by dhruba jyoti bora from assam dhruba jyoti it is a story of a uh, you know story of a group of militants and there is another book which is uh, which was launched recently it is called andhere se ujale ki or which means from darkness to light and this book is released in october and it has it is a collection of speeches of arun jetli his speeches his uh, generals everything our finance minister arun jetli the name of the book is andhere se ujale ki or so these were the best questions i hope you liked the video and um, i try to bring the best quality for you and by the way today i will also bring to you the you know the second edition let the day get over let me collect all the questions let me frame all the questions for 31st of october so the month is almost over i hope you had a great diwali i hope you had a great festive season and uh, may all the happiness continue and please share the video as much as you can that's the only way um, for us to reach out to as many people as we can thank you for watching